welcome to the Big Bang. In today's show... The strange but true story of Johannes Gutenberg, hot off the presses. Knock em dead with this cool Antarctic target game. And today's big, big question, what's the biggest donut you can make? But first, a trick. Violet, a challenge for you, right? OK. I want you to blow this piece of paper into that plastic cup using any of the bits on the table. Right, well, I won't need the drawing pin because the cotton reel will let me... Very <laughs> good, Violet, but actually I said blow, not suck. Oh, OK, then. How about... <laughs> well, that's not going to work, is it? Yes, it will. Watch this. If you put the piece of paper over the drawing pin like that... Right, mm -hmm. cotton reel on top of those two. Now I promise you, right, I am not sucking. I'm going to blow. Watch this. I'm watching carefully. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you are blowing. <laughs> Let's have a go. Go on, go on. The way this works is <gasps> wonderful. When you blow through the cotton reel, it moves the air on top of the paper out of the way, and that has the effect of sucking the paper to the cotton reel. The drawing pin is just there to sort of keep it in place. Top trick. Thank you. But I got a trick that's going to blow you away. By the end of the show, I'm going to make this straw explode. An exploding straw? Yes. <laughs> frozen ice floes of the South Pole. We witness this quite extraordinary behaviour by these remarkable penguins. Oh, nice shot! <laughs> this is a penguin flipper game. You just flip fish at the penguins with the seal's flipper. He starts off as a square mineral water bottle. Get someone to cut a notch in the neck, then glue on a bit of kebab skewer, and then cut a small hole about a third of the way down. Now get a rubber band, a big thick one, and thread through some string and a paper clip on the end. And you can use this to thread the paper clip and the string and the rubber band all through the hole. A bit of shaking helps. When you've got it through, be careful not to pull it all the way through. Hold on to the rubber band. You want to keep a bit out and secure it with a tiny bit of kebab skewer. Now the flipper is just a bit of card shaped like a flipper. A bit of a hole in that too so we can do more threading. Pull it and this is quite tough because you have to pull the rubber band really hard to get that through there. Open it up with your fingers and with a tiny bit of kebab skewer once more you end up with this, a flipping mechanism. What you will need to do though is secure this hinge with a couple of bits of string and glue it firmly in place and you've got your basic seal actually just add some fur and some eyes and there he is cute and cuddly and ready for fun the penguins are actually made out of a fizzy drink can with a piece of white paper wrapped around like that um, the flippers and the penguins tail well that's just a piece of black card cut into that sort of shape and taped or glued on there like that and then the penguin's beak well once again that's just a piece of black card with a pair of eyes drawn on and stuck on the front like that the last thing you'll need is some fish they're just old-fashioned clothes pegs painted silver with a bit of silver paper for the fins and draw on a fish face then slot it onto the seals flipper pull the flipper back and flip and one tip if you angle the seal's nose up, it'll get a higher flip. Are you ready? Yeah, go on. Go, fish! <laughs> Hundreds of years ago, one of the most precious and expensive things you could own was a book. And today's strange but true story is all about this guy, Johannes Gutenberg, who thought books should be precious but not expensive. Uh, guten Tag. Uh, please, may I borrow the new Harold Potter, please? Here you go, now give us your teddy bear. To borrow a book from a library, you had to leave something precious behind as security, <coughs> because books were worth so much money. Johannes Gutenberg was determined to find a quicker and cheaper way of making books, so he decided to find out all about printing. 
For thousands of years, people had been printing by cutting the words onto blocks of wood. But this took loads of time and energy. Besides, it was really boring. This is no good. I have to carve out a new block for every page. And it looks a mess anyway. Gutenberg's first stroke of genius was to use a saw. So now he had smaller, separate blocks of wood for each letter. Yeah, 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 this is much better. Now I can make lots of different words, like den und ned. And then when I want to print the next page, all I do is rearrange the letters. But there was another problem. The wood wore away very quickly. He needed a stronger material. Hmm. Luckily, Gutenberg was a goldsmith. He knew a lot about metals. He used a mixture of lead and tin to produce metal letters that were much stronger than the old wooden ones. So, Gutenberg had his letters. <laughs> now all I have to do is to apply the ink to the letters like so, and then press down with the paper and lots of the pressure. <laughs> oh, this is schrecklich. Oops. However hard he tried, he just couldn't get enough pressure on the paper to get a nice, even print of the text. Aha! My wine press is very good at the squashing of the grape. Maybe also it will be very good at the squashing of the paper onto the inky letters. Aha! Gutenberg was right. He adapted his wine press and built the first ever printing press. Wunderbar! Now I can print up exactly the same words over and over and over again, making lots and lots of lovely and very cheap books. This will change the world! And he was right again. Now everyone could afford to buy books, so more people learned to read. Passing on knowledge in a way which had never been done before. And more importantly, because books were cheaper, Everyone could borrow books from the library without having to pass over their most precious possessions. Oh, Berlin, my friend. Welcome home. So that's Uncle Ebenezer mm -hmm. and Auntie Ethel and her amazing moustache. It suited her, though, that moustache, <laughs> didn't it? How many sides has this thing got, Gareth? Ah, keep looking and you might just find them all. OK. The thing that Violet's playing with is called a hexaflexagon. It's a great way of displaying loads of pictures. It's actually got six sides, but don't tell Violet. Now, to make a hexaflexagon, you'll need a strip of this stuff. It's sticky-backed plastic. I've actually got two pieces stuck back-to-back -back here. You can find sticky-backed plastic from uh, DIY shops. Um, now, you'll need a strip that is at least 70 centimetres long and 6.1 centimetres wide. You'll need a compass to mark out 7 centimetre lengths down one side of the strip. Then, you need to put the compass back where you started and mark out 7 centimetre lengths down the opposite side. Join the points up to get 19 triangle shapes, which you'll need to score with a pen. Our website's got all the details. Now then, for the folding. Uh, you're going to fold it in pairs. So holding the first two triangles, take those under like that, then fold again, then fold again, then fold again. Keep folding and flipping all the way to the end and you realise you're left with one triangle on its own. Tuck that under and then take the whole thing and flip it over. Now, watch this fold very carefully. Put your hand on the right-hand end like this Flip that over like that, and then take this bit here and flip that up like that. Swap that bottom with that top. Take this bit that's sticking out and fold it over and glue that bit to that bit, and you've made a hex, a flexicum. Then decorate it by sticking six triangular pictures on the first set of faces. Once you've done that, flip round to the next set 
and do the same again. And then keep going, keep going, till you covered all the Yay, sides. Yeah, I found all the sides. Ah, oh, yes. How many you got then? Four. <laughs> keep looking. No. <laughs> yes. Some more? <laughs> yeah. Not telling you how many, though. Mmm, donuts. There's nothing like a good, fresh donut. With a hole in the middle. So, today's big question. What's the biggest donut you can make? Donuts are usually made from eggs and flour and things like that. Our giant donut is going to be made with a computer. We've designed a donut shape like this. The computer has unpeeled the shape and told us that we need lots of pieces of paper this shape. Right then, there's a piece of paper that shape. Then what we do is join it end to end like that. And then when you join lots of these pieces of paper side to side, you end up with something that looks like this. Now that is part of a donut shape. It's good, but it's a bit small. To make a giant donut, you will need a space to put it in, several extra pairs of hands, parcel tape and wet sponges, a little trundling roboty thing, some people who know how to make giant donuts, Ann and Glenn, and lots and lots and lots of paper. The silver room at Leeds City Art Gallery is just big enough to fit in all 250 metres of paper we'll be needing for our donut. Once all the paper's down, the computer tells the trundling robot-y thing to mark out the shapes of each segment. You can have a break. Come on! Donut. <laughs> 24 hours of hard work later, a fan breathes life into our donut. with the right ingredients big enough to get inside. Time for my trick. Violet, I've been trying to do this till I'm cross-eyed. There's no way you can make a straw explode. Well, there is, but you need a friend. So, <clears throat> pick a straw, any straw. Uh, I'll have that one. <laughs> OK. And all you've got to do is wind the straw up. Because what you're doing is you're compressing all the air into one tiny bit of the straw till it's fit to burst, then get a friend to flick at it. Flick it? Yeah. Hey, look at <laughs> right, that! It? Do it again! <laughs> okay, right. It went bop! Yeah, it works every time as well. Watch this. Yeah, go on, go on. Flick at it! Yeah. Yay! <laughs> I tell you what, if we had a really big straw like that, if I flicked it... You'd get a big bang? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you with us. <laughs> <laughs>